Hello, my name is Chris. I'm a KMP developer at TechSport. Says they're coming out Tuesday for that, right? We'll see. Today I'm going to be uh, responding to uh, this whole thing about productivity, 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 and versus adventure-driven development. And we're going to listen to some some people talk about this whole thing about productivity. But just put it in a nutshell: is the TLDR, they can't matter. They can't actually measure productivity using for knowledge workers. It, it, you can't actually do it. It's a it's a it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a leftover from the algebra classes they use to, to, to measure productivity for production lines. For if you're doing a production line, yes, I have 17 widgets coming off the line. Oh, can we do 18 tomorrow? Maybe, maybe we can do this over here. Can we twist this over here? We can rearrange something somewhere. And we get 18 off. So the productivity is measurable, right? So what these business schools have all told all, all these managers is every single process, no matter what it is, is just a production process. Well, that's not true. That's actually a lie. The knowledge work is not a production process. It will never be a production process. If they can, if they can make symphonies, making great symphonies, a production process, do you think they might have already done that by now? Maybe there's something inherent in how you create these, this knowledge work. It's like a symphony where you kind of have to have one person's vision through the whole thing. Uh, and so it could be, could be uh, there could be modules of it where you could do API barriers, but those can be separated out, right? Anyway, let me, let's, let's listen to, <laughs> let's listen to Charlie Munger talking about productivity. Oh no, this is talking about risk, risk. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about risk, how they try to measure risk as well. So risk and productivity, those are the two things I'm talking about in this, in this video. People think you can measure risk. And so what I found out from this video, which just came out a couple of days ago, is like, because I was like, don't they mean just volatility when they're like these stock people and they're and the financial people are going like, how, what's the risk on that? What's the beta on that? And you mean the volatility? I mean, the, you can just the historic, you can look at the, how it goes up, but you can't predict anything in the future by that. They're like, oh yeah, but we can. It's like, well, I don't know about that, man. I don't really think that's a thing. I don't really think that's a thing. And then they tried to apply that same because the financial guys came into this the tech sector, the knowledge worker sector, and said like every other business that they've ever been involved with is just a production thing. So you can measure the volatility, right? And that's the risk. Well, no, no, that's not what we're talking about. Charlie? Well, it got to be the occasion in corporate finance departments of university where they developed the notion of risk-adjusted returns. And my best advice to all of you would be to totally ignore this development. Mm -hmm. Risk had a very good colloquial meaning, meaning a substantial chance that something would go horribly wrong. Yeah, the substantial chance that something would go horribly wrong. When you're doing adventure-driven development, when you're doing real, truly, true entrepreneurial business, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong along the path, all the way up the mountain when you're doing, when you're doing, the, doing battle with the with the dragon of cons you know, what your customer needs and trying to meet your customer needs in a profitable way so everyone's got equitable, equ equitable maintainable, sustainable exchange going. And that stuff changes over time, right? So like things can go horribly wrong. Like somebody could invent the, the automobile and your buggy whip company is now out of business, right? You, where do you see that coming from? You don't, you can't see that coming. It's just earthquake, <sighs> it's over. And the finance professors sort of Got volatility mixed up with a lot of foolish mathematics, and, and uh, to me, it's less rational than what we do. And I don't think we're going to change. <laughs> yeah, well, the finance department seats. And he and what he's talking about, what he does is the the fundamentals. Like, what does this business do? He, these guys are experts in finding low risk businesses that are already running well and identifying those the kind of people that run them and the kind of people they want to be involved in the kind of business. So they have this massive filtering process that at the end of it, you only have a few left anyway. That they even meet the categories, which is people kind of doing adventure driven stuff, right? That's so like really what's what it boils down to. The people who are interested in quality and interested in meeting the customer demands over time as they change, there's only a few people who want to engage in that stuff. And it's these kind of creator destroyer types, right? Which have a specific kind of autistic and a little bit onerous, onerous type of uh, uh, demeanor uh, because they. They're not the preserver types. They don't, things are not meeting expectations. They're trying to make their stuff outstanding by seeing the things that are unacceptable and making them improve, right? So the creator types have to be involved with the destroyer types. The destroyer types are usually kind of disagreeable types. 
and the creator types have got all, you know, all kinds of ways up the mountain. There's all kinds of ways they could figure out. There's different viewpoints, but really we're just looking for the one that the, the customers is, is saying that what they want. Right. So it's like, do you mean this? Do you mean this? Do you mean this? Do you mean this? It's like, no, I only want the one thing that really meets all the things that I need. And it's not hard. It's really difficult to figure out what that is. And it's risky. And then people try and put mathematical formulas on that, that, that whole concept. You can't. The, the, the volatility uh, equals risk. Now, they want, to, they want to measure risk, and they don't know any other way. They don't know how to do it, basically. And so they... Uh... They don't know how to do it, basically. They don't want to get their hands dirty mucking around in all this junk down here that you have to know about how the society actually works, how people are put together, psychology, markets, uh, monopolies. These guys love monopolies. Holy crap. You know, that's what they that's kind of what they look for is a, a dominant player in the industry that 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 is still interested in dealing battle with this, this dragon as opposed to just going out, you know, losing the script and like going out of adventure mode and going into maintainer mode, right? You're going into maintainer and we're just totally just to how things happen anyway but there's just a few companies who are willing to keep going and pushing the envelope right here and they can only go so long it's usually one person i know it's like oh it's the apple they're just amazing they always do the amazing thing no no it's usually a person usually one or two people usually one of these guys here who are very rare because honestly it takes a lot of guts and a lot of fucking wanting to dick with a lot of crap to get up into this in this range there's lots of easier ways to make money <laughs> And most people be better. They just like have they have other things they'd rather do. But every once in a while, there's a guy who wants to go on the journey and see. He's the, takes the fool card. This is the Western mystery tradition of the the mystical mystical path of the Western mystery tradition. And uh, basically, this is the fool card. You're, you're going off into the unknown. It could be it could be danger, danger. So so the mathematician's like, well, how much danger? We don't know. We don't know. And we can't know unless we want to get in the muck and mire, make some mistakes, back up and move ahead. They say that volatility measures risk. And, you know, they, uh, I've always often used the example that the Washington Post stock, when we first bought it, had gone in 1973, had gone down almost 50% uh, from a valuation of the whole company of close to, um, say, 180 or 175 million down to maybe 80 million or 90 million. And because it happened very fast, the beta of the stock had actually increased, and a professor would have told you that the stock company was more risky if you bought it for 80 million than if you bought it for 170 million, which is something that I've thought about ever since they told me that 25 years ago, and I still haven't figured it out. Then, I mean, you can look at stuff in retrospect, right? But you can't look at stuff ahead of time. It's a, a lot of it's luck. Sorry, you don't know what the next roll of dice is going to be. I don't care how many times you can roll it. I got the statistical deviation, blah blah blah. But you don't know if it's going to be a one or a six. You don't until you roll it. And that takes guts, that takes risk. Like these guys are, these guys are just like, we're rolling, rolling again. And like sometimes they're, they're getting hit, they're getting bonked on the head. They're going up, they're competing against the, the, the customer's demands. Like I, I needed a case, I needed a better UI. This billing cycle suckle sucks. This, 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 this. And these people are like, like, can we make it up the hill? Like, I don't know. Like, these customers got a lot of demands. <laughs> you know, it's like, is this team gonna make it? Is this team gonna make it? I don't know. I don't know. You do, you actually can't know. Well, there's some identifying features. There's identifying features, and these people are hard to deal with, right? They're hard to deal with because they're looking to because they think pretty much all everything that's, that's, that they see is unacceptable, and they see a way to make it outstanding when they're paired up with a guy that's like, I got some ideas. I got I can figure some of this stuff up. I don't know which one is going to do it, and I can't fight the way you can to destroy the current thing enough to make the new thing uh, uh, visible and apparent to the to the customer, to this guy. Let's talk about, um, let's go into a little bit more about productivity. Productivity in, in, the, in the realm of knowledge work. Let me, let me reset this thing here. That they are so let's just listen. You know who's really good at measuring productivity in a corporate environment? No one. There's no one who's good, there's no method for measuring productivity uh, in, in a white collar kind of cubicle uh, or workspace environment. Well, it's not that environment. It's the knowledge work. It's going after things that we don't know what they are yet. There's no way to, to, to calibrate to know what that is. We can have a thousand guys do a thousand symphonies. We can show them all the things you need to do to make a great symphony. And they're not going to come for the great symphony. It just takes this guy. There can be a thought you can train them all up and all the stuff about music theory, but you're not going to get a great symphony. It's going to be someone like this. It's going to be someone like this who's like willing to to risk it all and to try and try and try at the at probably at his at his 
for lack of better judgment, should not be doing that. Should not be doing that, right? Should, you should not be doing that. <laughs> but they do it anyway. And that's the guys that actually come up with the stuff, not the thousand monkeys on typewriters, <laughs> right? So it's not the cubicle, the workspace. It's not even, it's none of that stuff. It's the attitude and what they're trying to do. Now, salespeople, yes, they have a script. It's been handed down. Now, developing that script is a different type of talent, right? That's more of this, this guy here. But the, he, but the, but they can, you can measure output. It's in a cubicle. It's in a workspace. It's in white collars. You have finance. You have sales. You have marketing. But there's always got to be someone in here that's a little cheeky and a little bit irascible, kind of like, kind of curmudgeonly, like, eh, because he's always complaining about the stuff that sucks. And it's like, oh, he's trying to get through the, he's trying different ways to get through the preservative. Like, there are other ways of doing this. And if we stay stuck with the current way, we're going to be out of business. And it's like, no, this is business has been in business and going for a hundred years. And, you know, we can use this to our advantage or not. We can at least see what's going on because all kinds of companies, you might be told, I'm told, we work in a meritocracy and we measure performance and we measure productivity and all this. It, it, it's nonsense. It turns into a game. And there are a couple, right. there, there are different functions that- and There's a name for it. There's like, there's a name for this. When you have a metric, people will just gain the metric. I'm sure I could, somebody in the comment section below will give me the name of that or I'll, I'll think of it in a second. It's like when you game the metric, I mean, I'll go look it up here and I can I looked for it. <laughs> it took me two seconds. Goodhart's Law. Goodhart's Law is an adage that often say that when a measure becomes a target, it seems to be a good measure, right? So people just get, start get, basically people go, oh, is that the target? Let's game that, right? So you get the preserver types. It's like, oh, I just need to tick those boxes you've set up. I can tick boxes. Oh, you best believe I can tick boxes. This guy is anti-box ticking. He does not like the box ticking exercise. He may set up an ex. He might like suggest an exercise, a box ticking that will do a, somewhere in the ballpark, but anyway like you're gonna get you're gonna get people who um are gonna game it man that's just how it works that's just how it works that are easier or harder to measure you know the proxies heading towards productivity but overall nobody has a handle on actually measuring productivity that's why they, they measure these proxies you know proxy just being something that that points to the actual measure, um, like activity, right? Like how many hours you work, because they have no way of figuring out how productive you are. And I'll give you a couple of examples on this. Right. Now, I'm talking about He's white collar, I hate that term, but white, you know, like corporate work, right? So knowledge worker, whatever you want to call it. I'm not talking about construction. I'm not talking about- Right, so, but specifically knowledge work that has no production metric around it, that could probably is gonna fail. Uh, honestly, it's like discovering what the customer needs and the way they want it, that this week, this, and our taste, and our like uh, judgment, uh, ethics, morality, perspective, politics, all these things are all part of it, dealing with your particular customer, taste, uh, art, art, artistic style, uh, context, what else? Uh, language, uh, class, <laughs> demographics, all that stuff. Manufacturing, uh, or, or you know, working at a, at a grocery checkout, or Amazon uh, pick and pack in the warehouses. Those are different. Those that productivity can be measured and has been measured for over 150 years. Right, and will be mechanized at some point. Most of it, it will be mechanized somehow, some way. It's going to be anything they can have a checklist associated with that somebody follows a script or a plan. It's going to be automated. Right, that is where we get this idea of productivity, which is basically out worker output per hour worked. Ooh, it's about, so it's like the most amazing, it's like sixth grade algebra equation. And they're like, all the people, like all the people are into this KPI stuff, and all these types, of like all of my, if they could just get, bring me down to a calculation, if I could just get a, if I could just get an algebraic formula, then we'll solve our problems in the tech knowledge worker field. It's like, no, you're not, man. No, you're not. You're actually making it worse. You're actually going against yourself because some of these guys will get pissed off and go, okay, I'll give you your damn metric. As long as you get me get you off my back, I'll give you the metric, right? And if, you're, if your whole company becomes about metrics, these guys get pushed out because they're too, they're too curmudgeon. They're like, no, we don't want the metric. We want the actual thing where we're talking to the customer. We're, actually, we're not setting up these checklists. We're actually talking to this customer directly saying, hey, we have a different solution here. If you can just get off the trying to KPI something that's not KPIable. And this is actually, a this is academia. They're not, they should have really separated this out. It's like you got production processes, which are made by knowledge workers, right? So they're gonna tweak the uh, factory and what they actually, what the factory produces and how the factory produces it. That's all knowledge worker. Once that thing's in place, right? This guy takes over. He just monitors it, makes sure everything's working properly. Make a couple of tweaks here and there. 
And he gives the one true religion. He gets the one true religion from this guy, right? <clears throat> Who like this guy play, paves the way to create for creation for this guy to make stuff that this guy goes, this is the way to do it. After the myriad of ways of trying and all the different things. Oh, look, there's one that actually would that fits it right. And it's like because there's people here moving in those directions, a lot of people have failed. You never see. You never see, or you see once their demo, or you went to the website, it's like this is crap. And you, you move on. <laughs> like, what? That's how it works. <laughs> That's it. That's all that the productivity means in general. So, so in, if you're making widgets, it's simply how many widgets, how many things you make every hour that you work. I mean, that's easy to calculate. That doesn't take any time. See, the thing is, people, they try and make a really big deal about this KPI stuff, but it's all this stuff right here. This, it's just this. And the knowledge, and the people that like, get in charge, like, oh, if we just push it a little harder, it's like, no, man. You gotta get you gotta get your hands dirty with the knowledge work because it's all this other stuff that's not that you can't just count. That's the productivity that started this whole thing way way back, you know, with with Ford Motor Company and, and way before that. Right, uh, right. Industrial, the industrial revolution that never got updated. They never the knowledge work stuff that happened since the fifties or so, for fifties or sixties. This whole branch, they try to make it engineering rise. If you just get all the engineering stuff, then all the stuff cracks up a lot. Well, Waz proved that was wrong. Well, Waz proved that was wrong because the Waz was told you add more tra transistors, you add more, add more, add more, add more, and he was like, "No, I'm gonna do it something different. I am going to be a, go up after my go for a cave entrance of doing the minimal number of diodes." And that was just like, "What do you mean minimal? No, no, we need like an off the shelf package to do this." It's like Waz was like, "No, you don't. No, 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 you don't." No, you don't. But he, but he only found that by going up the mountain here, by being challenged, by being challenged by this guy saying there's got to be a better way. And this guy's, oh, I could find a better way, maybe. I was, and this guy's like, this guy can really minimize this thing to open up a whole new market, right? To open up the the to open up to find this cave opening of a whole new place for a whole new set of customers that are just waiting, and then and they're little, you know, they're 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 small in the beginning, right? When when Waz was doing it, it was like a little tiny little wizard. Little lizard. He was a little, little, little lizard. But, but, but they grew into this big thing, right? Because they were able to, like, see a cave opening and, and allow more people access to something that they were already like, this is amazing. This is, this is, this is a way to, to uh, another, another level of human creativity. To see how many of a uniform uh, work output that you can do in a given hour or a given day. Right. Uniform work output. And that's the thing about knowledge work. It's not uniform. Well, parts of it are. But this other stuff, this adventure-driven stuff, the people that they're really, what they're really asking for, what they're, what they're really looking for, but like, what? Reduce the risk. It's like, well, that goes hand in hand. You can't get, you can't get rid of them. There's the risk reward goes right together, and you can't get guys that are, oh, I'll go on and for salary, I'll punch your Jira ticket and work on your, your risky thing. But you know, as long as you you make it, like I, I don't have any risk involved in myself. It's like, oh, you're really gonna get some good people then, right? That's all thrown out the window with, with knowledge work and with, you know, with the things that we do today. So if you're in manufacturing, great, that can be measured. That, that is, you know, number up, that's good. You only have a bit of, of uh, control on that anyway because of the machine, you basically have to stop first. Uh, I'm talking about working in finance, computer science, product. Uh, finance, I mean, I kind of know what he's talking about. But finance is still, eh. You get too creative with that, you, still, you, go, you pull an Enron or do, start doing a pyramid scheme because it's very profitable to do those, right? It's very creative, isn't it? Very creative to fraud to, to defraud your customers. But a stock buyback. That's what creates real value for the customer. So I don't know about this finance thing. You gotta be you gotta be more convincing there. Computer science, of course, I don't even think if you call it computer science, it should be called representative representational technology. <laughs> like this is these are really we're not really doing with computer science it's not really about these these uh, data structures and algorithms and stuff. It's more about psychology uh ethics uh uh what um context uh art artistic style uh trends uh so social stuff because it's all this computer is representing something else there's just pixels on the screen but look at me you think i'm talking to you but i'm not just pixels on your screen your brain's going oh i'm interpreting that as da -da -da. it's like that's what's going on that's really what's going on here no uh, so that is knowledge works like how can you Apply this technology, right? This stuff here, the lights on the screen, buttons you can press, uh, to help people with their problems. Well, how many ways can we do that? And we have some examples already, but we haven't seen the revolution yet. Project management, project management, uh, executive leadership.
a uh, project management, product management. Uh, I mean, you're following a checklist. Project management. I mean, you, you got a list of things you want to get done and you do them. Executive leadership. Uh, if you're not pulling some weight here, if here, if you're just going down the checklist, guys, what's our KPIs? I'm going to set some KPIs up for you. If you're not actually out there pulling tickets, doing UI, UX work, if you're not actually pushing something, where is it? Where is it? Everyone has to be involved. Everybody's got to be involved. That's going to be on this adventuring stuff. It can't be. I mean, there's no, there's no, I'm going to just uh, check, set back and let somebody do the work while I check off checklists. You got to do some UI, UX, get in there some sales, start talking to customers, get some customers. Riling, get, talk, what are they doing? What do they want? Get figure out how to do some marketing. Get the, how to do advertising. Write some write some copy. Customer support training. How do you get your people to talk to our customers in the right way so we don't lose them after we've acquired them? Like documentation, video, YouTube channels, promoting your products, user groups. It's got to get in there somehow. You can't just I'm gonna make that off to somebody else. Like no 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 no. The people that are super into it, they're into it. They're not, Steve Jobs did not hire all managers for all the different roles he did. No, he did them all. He did them all because he wanted to, because that's the flavor he was bringing, man. That's his value add is this other thing that, oh, we can't put a KPI on that. It's like, no, you can't. Sorry. That's just how it is. You, you have to be able to identify and tolerate these characters because they're the ones that are seeing what's unacceptable and willing to destroy it. And, and open up the door for the, and these guys, these guys sometimes it usually cahoots with these guys who are like, what do we need to go? Which way do we go? Up? Well, we're going, we're going to okay, try this. Try this. And this guy goes, try this one. Okay. We'll try that one. So, well, that didn't work. Let's go. Okay. We'll try this one. And it's like, I'm talking to this guy. I got, I got this guy on my shoulder. All I need to do is plow the way for you guys. These kinds of things. So let's take a step back. Think about what the company wants. What does a corporation wants? The only thing, the only thing a company cares about is profitability. That's right. it. If you don't believe me, you right. know, watch profitability. Go exactly. We're, the reason we're going after the dragon is for the chalice. Now, for most people, now for Waz, that chalice was like, how many, so I can minimize the number of diodes so I can show off to my friends and we can they can build a computer without without having to spend $10,000. They can spend 500 bucks and solder it in myself and they're minimizing the number of solder steps because he was soldering. And so that was where his goal was. So Now, he made out very, very well. Don't get me wrong. But he wasn't. But his main goal was not that. So that's that's a, that's the challenge for the for the destroyer types when they want to get the creator types involved. You have to let them know, and you have to pick the guys that are kind of into doing that stuff. They're into it. There's a lot of people that are into it, but that you can't. But you can't let them go down these lead mines because they will go. So that's what happened with Waz. It's like he still wanted to do the, the minimum chipset chipset thing. It's like no, dude, we're moving on now to the max stuff. He's like, no, I want to do the minimum chipset. It's like, hey. That was what we did to get here, but now we're moving on, right? Well, now we're moving on. We got to keep going up the hill. We got to keep going up the mountain. There's more stuff. They so the Apple One was 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 like this. All right, right here. Apple One was like a little tiny little one, and then the Apple Two was like this one, and then the Mac was like this one, and then Apple today, you know, is a massive, massive creature because there's still got some of that spirit left, but honestly, it's fading, right? So they got so there's going to be another another one that comes up, right? And that's going to take on, I think, a lot of stuff that Alan Kay was talking about. Where we get, we instead of having to, if we have an idea of how to add something or change something to one of these applications, we don't have to wait for the developers to do it. We can get in there somehow and, and, and modify it for our own use uh, on top of theirs, right? Without having to build up all this stuff all up there just to get the one little feature we want, right? So that's the next phase that we're going to have in the in these OSs, and uh, that's what Alan Kay was was oh, that's what I see is coming down to because being restricted in these little verticals, it's, it's, uh, and then the AI tools that are coming along that, that will help, uh, make people uh, additional functionality onto these applications. That's, that's what I see happening. And it's going to be at the operating system level. Um, so that's what I see. Anyway, that's pie in the sky. Maybe could, could be someday, <laughs> but right now, uh, yeah. So profitability. So these companies, if you want to do something else in the world, which, you know, this is what, you know, Waz was pretty happy with just doing the tech, right? But Jobs had done something else in mind, right? He had something else that he wanted to do. And that would require a big gold cup to keep going, right? So that's, that's, but that's, so this has to be part of it. And this is why all businesses, this is why all the people who get in, who start these businesses are, all, are usually adventure driven. And that's what they're trying to go after. Now, a lot of times they'll end up down here 
lava lakes in direct competition or a lead mine. Uh, or they'll get into these silver or it's like, oh, yeah, doing these programs for other people, super easy, manageable process. And I can, you know, eat very well with a silver spoon and, and just battling the same creature over and over and over again. But that's not but you're not going after the adventure there. You're just you're false, solving somebody else's problem. Go down, watch it become negative and see how a company throws everything out of the boat to right. save that profitability. That is the only thing. Look, we live in a capitalist society. That's just a fact. The company's not profitable. Well, even in a communist society, you have to still do all this stuff. Uh, if you don't have it, if you're not if you're not producing more than you're taking in, you're just you know, you're a failed society. Sorry, it's not it's not going to survive. So, and many companies don't survive, right? Over over longer terms. Correct. Ninety percent fail within two years, or with ninety percent in three years, and then ninety nine percent in ten. So you know all the big huge giants that were just massive juggernauts. Oh my God, they ruled the earth. AT and T, Motorola. Oh my God, uh, this is massive. Jugger and IBM, oh, it's like, yeah, it's kind of like also ran has been because they get taken over, right? This is just the nature of the beast. They get taken over the private, the preserver types, and they actively shun the destroyer and creator types. They get rid of them because they can't, can't deal with all the check boxes and the Jira burn down charts and the, the CICD pipelines for every goddamn little thing and check a PR. Oh, yeah, check your PR. I'm going to put some notes on your PR. So every like change it should take two minutes, take six weeks. Oh, yeah, that's great. So, so profitability in our system is everything. So that's what sort of the organization wants. That's what the organism of the corporation wants. So everything gets filtered down through that lens of getting profitable. Now, right. productivity is just a proxy for profitability. Right. You have all these very expensive. And in industrial processes, it's, it's yes, if you have 50 widgets coming off your line this week, and you have a demand for a hundred, and you can't get there because you have you can't get there. So if you can delete, if you can put another line up, and you have now a hundred, guess what? You're profitable because you can measure the profit, you know, the amount of cost that's going in, the thing coming out, and how much per use. On each. It's super easy. It's just algebra. Yes, people make a huge big deal about that. Like it's like as if they can calculate it with a knowledge work. You can't. Salespeople maybe. Marketing? I don't think so. Advertising. <sighs> Is it worth it? Is it you're getting your money? I don't know. They don't know. Nobody knows. And then the click farms and all this stuff and ad, all these ad places totally scamming you, doing VPNs into your zone and clicking on your ad. It's like goofy shit. But that's how. That's just how it goes, man. Workers that you you know you, you cost a ton to recruit them, cost a ton to pay them. You got to give them sick leave and overtime and all this stuff. And you want to get as much work profit out of them per hour that they're working in the job. And you want to get as many hours as possible, right? That's those are those are proxy. That's the industrial stuff, yeah. Because the guy's working on the line, he's got eight hours a day. If you do another shift, you get more people on the line, like he wants to work overtime. Like, oh, this is all stupid stuff. This is all retarded stuff. Like, this is not knowledge work. This is nothing to do with knowledge work. The more time you keep people in the office for these, for these kind of guys, the more ways they're going to just figure out how they can fool you into thinking that you're doing, all, doing that work. Where they're going to work about two, two hours a week. Um, a day maybe two hours a day but after they automate everything away they haven't told you by the way they're not going to tell you they're not going to tell you they're automating it but they're going to you're going to act like it because this is what you're measuring that's why when you measure this stuff it's like how many hours a day are you in here it's like you're measuring the wrong stuff with knowledge workers that's not where it comes from anyway measures they're not the real thing right so even productivity doesn't matter and i'll, and I'll, I'll say why in in a little bit so, so there are a couple of functions where we get closer to that profitability narrative. One is sales, right? So sales, uh, you know, you can, you, the yeah. more you sell, the more money you bring in, right? And the more money you bring in, presumably, if there's a, if there's a profit margin, the more money the company makes. Okay. So, yeah, so you have your calls, you're going, your emails, and there's your input, right? And then on the output, it's going to be some small percentage of that. Ooh, okay. Well, say, oh, that's right. That, we get really close to profitability. But, so on the company level, they like to see that. But there's a huge caveat. So any of you guys that are in sales, what happens if you, if one quarter you, 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 you know, you, we all know what happens if you miss your numbers, right? If you miss your quota, then you, you, you know, you, a couple, you know, quarters or months or whatever that is uh, in a row, then your job's at risk, right? They That's the first thing. You have to have a quota. So by the time you have quotas involved with your sales team, you're already out of adventure mode. Now you're out of adventure mode. You're out of adventure. Because uh, what it is is like, we're going to make money. We're going to figure out what we need to make money uh, on this. And we're going to, and we're going to like, if you if you max out your quota, there's no quota. It's like whatever you can bring in in sales makes it so this company will succeed. So you don't have to go work at IBM or Microsoft or any of these these big companies that do this kind of stuff, right? And that's why it's got to be a small number of people. 
as small number of people. And if you scale them up, you got you can't put caps on their freaking sales numbers. This, okay, let's keep going. They have no need of you. They're not looking for you know uh, how good the person you are. They're not looking for you know how you you organize uh, all kinds of events in the company and you boost them around. They don't care. They, it doesn't matter at all. It's, it's you 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 whatever you've sold, you're only as good as your last quarter, last two quarters as a salesperson. So what happens? That's on the downside. What happens on the upside? So if you if you if you get a bit more, if you sell a bit more, they set a quota and and that's what the you know the the that's the organization uh, design that you sell a particular amount of, of, of product. Now, what happens if you sell 3% above your quota, right? 103%, right? You really work hard in a, in a quarter and you sell 103%. What's going to happen? Well, you'll probably get a bonus. You'll probably get a kicker that's above your quota and all that. That's good stuff, right? 103%, you're really go-getter. What happens if you devise a system that you consistently hit 150, 200% of your quota? Then you're at a startup. <laughs> you're at a startup because but what, the, what the quota is like, hey, man, you you eat what you get what you kill really and then we we have a we have a number we would like to see and if you can go over it great and would not be shitty and cheesy and like about this because what are you doing like doing this stuff you're gonna kill your kill your people who are bringing in the goods like what this this quota thing's ridiculous you all know it your quota goes up your quota goes up you don't get it you, you might get a bonus one time even though you are selling you are being better than everybody else what happens they're going to notch it up they're going to make you make you <laughs> yeah that's a that's the, 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 if this is a standard process i pretty much think it is and all these corporations this is the best best practice so what they're really doing is they're cheating the sales guy right this sales guy who's figured out a way that you couldn't figure out to get to get the money from these people somehow some way and it's ethical you know they're doing all the certain rules, but they found it because their personality, whatever. Why would you cause say what they're trying to do is like, oh, let's just take that money. It's too easy. That was too easy. So we're gonna take we're gonna take the sales guy's num money next year. We'll give it to him this year, but next year we're gonna take it away. Oh yeah, that's real motivating, by the way. That makes people really want to figure out how they can sell your product better. And all you do is end up having to get another sales guy that's just gonna be mediocre. So. Any businesses that are actively doing this, if you, if you want to give, get, get some sales training from a person who who's doesn't have all the mind control stuff that else goes on, that like you really want people like this. You want people in there who are willing to figure out how they can do 200% sales. That's the people you want in there. Yes. And you want to make sure they can do major, major sales like that. Yes. Because they're going to keep the company afloat. What? Like, you, like figure it out. And then if you're if there has to be some sort of negotiation where you have to change the quota or whatever, even then I'm like, what are you doing? Like, figure out how much you want. And let them go. What the hell? Like, this is this is this is this transactional nature of the of the of the country or the society that's come into. It's like, no, you can't make more than me. Uh, uh, even though you figured out a way that I would never think about doing, you you can't make more than me. I worked at a company called Chaos Tools. Okay, I can tell you this company because they're long gone and everybody's like out of it. This is like 30 years ago. And they had actually gone through a little bit of a slump and I had to, had to lay off some people and a lot of people left because it was just a boom town at the time. It was just, it was in 93 or so in San Francisco. And they fired everybody on my team and they, I was like, you know what? And they were about there, they were like talking to me like, we're going to have you take over. So I'll, I don't mind taking over their stuff, man. But you gotta pay me what they were doing. You got to, at least half, at least half. I mean, I'm taking over seven people's job. You definitely overhired for this for this thing, uh, and that's not my problem. That's your problem. Uh, but you can't get rid of everybody and expect me to to do everything. So I made them give me. The, I was paid the most in the whole company, but I was also doing advertising, marketing. I was running their website uh, at the time, which is like an AOL thing. I was putting their demos up. I was doing customer service. Uh, I was writing their manuals. I was getting the manuals printed. I was getting their box design. I was getting their box printed. Everything you needed to get in the disc, disc duplicate, I was doing everything. Uh, for I did this a couple for a couple products, and eventually I was like, and they, and they didn't. I didn't tell them this, but the reason I was doing all that was because I was planning on going and doing my own thing anyway, which is going to be completely different from what they were doing already. And like, I'm doing something else, completely different market. And they couldn't figure out why I was like, oh, you just pay me a little bit more, which wasn't much. I mean, they, and these guys had no mentoring. They didn't know how to do any of this stuff. They didn't know how to do any of it. And that's like, you know, I, 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 got, I got what I needed. I understood how the, everything was put together. And I went off and did my own company, did my own startup. And then I already had all the training and all this stuff. I got paid okay 
I mean, I found out later that people paid a lot more. Holy crap. Uh, and, and these guys are all on stock. You know, they're, they're all, they're doing fine. And they were just famoosing me, telling me I was, I was the highest paid. No, no, that was just a famoose. But anyway, I, I used it to my full advantage. So if you have that in mind, yeah, take on the stuff and try and boost your salary and you, while you're doing it. And if not, man, these environments are just terrible anyway. You work harder for that. Now it's 200%. Huh. And the best, I was, I was leading a sales team for a while, for a couple of years, and um, they've been around that function quite a bit. And the best performing salespeople that I've ever seen, they sit and they try to get that number at 103 to 105%. At these big companies, so he's talking about Google, right? So he worked at Google. Yeah, so that's that. That's that. That's this stuff here. Google trying to uh, weasel out uh, and think they can get better, get better stuff. Because this is how they think, right? They have to think the check boxes and oh, there's, a, there's a set number and equal pi and blah, 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 and all this other crap. They don't even understand that there's destroyer creative types who actually have personalities and, and can engage with people and bring something else to the table that is not going to be anything related to the technology. So, um, yeah. So I would definitely, if I have been involved with any of these sales company, whatever, I would definitely, I would think about what I need to get to quote to what I think I need to make them to make the company go. And then after that, let them have it. They're only going to be doing it for a couple of years anyway. Come on, let them have it and then work together. It's like, Oh, this person is cool because they see my, the value I'm bringing. And I want to work with them for on other stuff because other companies just aren't doing that. They're going to steal from the sales guy. Uh, this was at Google where, you know, sales, sales do, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a little different, but sales is sales, right? So they know at Google, there's a policy that if you, if you make above like 107%, especially on a, on a higher level, it, it, it's, you know, it's a pyramid. So the higher levels that you go up, the, these numbers are a little different, but the, if you make over 107%, you know, your quota is going up next quarter. That's it. And if you make 102, 103, 105, you get a kicker where you get a higher percentage of your, of your total of sales. So everybody, the best people that I've seen there that, that are you know, lauded as being amazing, they sit and they try to figure out how to get that 103 to 105%. There's your KPI being gained and you just lost what millions of dollars of sales just because you're weaseling out on the 7, 3% 3, 3 or whatever, 5% or whatever the dick around number is. You're totally missing the big picture. Holy crap. And if they're going to go over that, they're going to get a 107, 108. They will talk to the customer and say, hey, can we delay this to the next quarter? And I'm sure Great. you've seen it. It's a good strategy if you want to maximize your, your, your paycheck. It is. And it doesn't help the company at all because they're, they're stopping business, right? They're, 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 you know, maybe they, they're a little bit late on their emails or whatever. So that it goes to the next quarter. So they get to the 103, 105%, not 109, 112. Ugh, then your quota's going up. This is really these people, these, these preserver types. Under, so people, the salespeople in the destroyer carrier category, for sure. Uh, most of, well, some are the top, the top ones are, they figured out, Oh, I got to do something different. And I have to meet, meet customer demands in this other way that may not be in the book standard, <laughs> like doing Coke off of separate stripper, strippers ass at, 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 at Domingo's down <laughs> the pinkies down, <laughs> down the strip club. That's how they get the sales done. And the preservers don't, that's not on their checklist. <laughs> Okay? So that's productivity. That's how it works. So if you're in sales, you know this. You know this, know this, know this. Don't, you know, it is a bad personal strategy to be more productive. It is a bad personal strategy to be to knock it out of the- At these huge companies, definitely bad idea. And the clo so you, the sooner you can get out of them, the better. And I understand why people want to be in there. It's a good paycheck. It's easy. It's, it's preserver lifestyle. But don't think you're going to be doing that forever. Right? It's a good deal while you got it. And while you got it, get it. And when it's gone, it's gone the park every quarter because all they're going to do is ratchet up your quota and then and, until you can't make that quota anymore and they pay you less that that's the game so the game is to just figure out when you're going to get that 105 or whatever it is at your company okay so that's sales let me give you an example from say finance we got we got two women in, in finance one's sally one's barbara right so sally sally's a go-getter right her manager loves her she's amazing she's in bums and see at 7 a.m every day every day she's like she's sitting there she's she's so motivated and she's she's working away on her uh, on her computer every day 7 a.m she comes in and She's, you know, she's always a bit, a bit, uh, you know, busy, always doing something. Her calendar is packed and, and she doesn't get out of there until 6 p.m. Every day, every day. Sally is a hard worker. Go Sally. As a manager, her manager looks at Sally and, 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 and she's like, wow, Sally is awesome. Like Sally, not, Sally's my go-to gal. Like I, I can, I, you know, Sally, she works so hard um, every day. Sometimes her, her financial reports are a little late or sometimes, you know, I got a project that's, you know, that, that's not so great, but, but really she, she just gives it all uh, at, at work. She really works hard. Okay. Good Sally. Now let's look at Barbara. Okay. Barbara is lazy. 
Barbara doesn't really like her job very much. So she comes in and she figured out uh, like uh, uh, some, some sort of business intelligence software, right? And she is able to automate 95% of her job. So she has the same job, similar job to Sally, right? Very similar. They do, they do almost the same functions. But Barbara found some software and some automation that she can come in. She doesn't even need to come in, but she can come in for about 15 minutes a day, maybe an hour, and hit a couple buttons, and her job is done. All the presentations are, are, are created automatically. All Everything is, is done just so this is a totally doable thing, and people I know people who have done this type of thing for sure. Great, and then she leaves and she goes gets you know gets a spa treatment or whatever whatever Barbara wants to do with the rest. Shit, I've done this thing. I've done this thing. I worked for this gold company it's called Gold the Gold Bullion Guy, and he was, he was having me type in gold prices every couple hours into the website. Well, I wasn't going to be doing that, so I made a little script that did that automatically scraped the Kitco and they adjusted the prices for everything. And you know, to the, to all this pricing thing, and it took me zero time after that. I just had to update the script every once in a while when Kitco changed their thing. And he still would hate me the hourly rate. The free time. Her manager hates this, right? Because her manager is looking, she's not looking at productivity, right? Barbara is more productive, productive than Sally by any measure. She is, she is knocking it out of the park. Productive, why? Because she can do that same job. Sally. Oh, by the way, I did tell them eventually that what I was doing, how I was doing it. And uh, I set the system up properly for them. Did he, did he pay me more? No, he let me go. Takes you know, 11 hours in the day, she does it 15 minutes because she's automated. But to the manager, this does not fit the proxy, which is activity. So that's why they put you know, uh, monitoring on your computers and all this at work. It's not to measure your productivity, it's to measure the activity. It's to make sure that you're doing something like a monkey does and, uh, and, and you are actually you know, making, making noise and making activity because they think that's a proxy for productivity, which is a proxy for profitability. That's so that so the preservers they just you cannot understand the knowledge work stuff because it's destroyer creator activity, right? It's just not their nature. They're not trained. Our our school system, our indoctrination system. After twelve years of public school education, you are definitely set up to be a preserver type. And if you don't get along in those environments, they don't got a lot for you. Sorry, sorry. And the and also it's just kind of a personality internal thing. Like, do you think things suck? I think a lot of people do, right? They want to be the destroyer type, but they're eh, most of the time it's fine. But for people, it's like this is this shit sucks, like really sucks. But you also have to have internally this creativity thing. So that's why I bring up Steve Jobs a lot, because yeah, both you've been in these environments with Waz for years, for years, for years and years. At least like what ten years before, like five, five, seven, eight, nine years before they did their thing together. They've been in the, like just living in the same ground, the same people, in the same mindset. So by the time they got together, they're already like ten years in, right? So that's what I'm saying about that. Okay, Barbara, it's not going to go well for Barbara, right? So she if she comes in and she's like, "Yo, I've automated my entire job. I, you know, I get paid well here. It's good, and, and I should be because you know what? I don't. I, I'm, I'm smart. <laughs> I'm smart because I automated." The and that's what I told the guy at the Gold Bullion guys, like, hey, man, I did this whole thing. I automated your system for you. Like, we can we can put me off on doing other stuff. We can go into this market. It's like, you did what? You're not supposed to do that. The whole thing. They are going to probably, if the manager finds out about Barbara's little uh, uh, automation, she's going to say, well, great, Barbara, now you can teach the entire department about your automation. Great. Now, now I want you here for the next three months, uh, you know, every day, training everybody else to do that. And at the end of those three months, probably, you know, Barbara's got to find a new job. Because, because you know, if she's if she's automated, you know, ninety five percent of it. I didn't know that at the time when I did that little thing, and I automated this part. I thought I would be rewarded, like, hey, a promotion, or I can move on to some other stuff, some automate some other stuff. No, mm -hmm. that's that's five percent is left. That's one in twenty of that department is needed. So there's probably going to be layoffs coming up because there's not that much finance to do. So they say, okay, bye bye, Barbara. Thanks for playing. You think they're going to give her a management role? No, no. Why is that? Because as soon as she gets into management. She's threatening the other the other players. She's threatening. Look, everybody in that department gets laid off or gets in, you know, like, hey, why aren't you doing this? They they are they are they are in trouble. They are threatened because of Barbara's good thinking and being productive. She bought the narrative. She believed it. Hey, I'm gonna be productive. And you know, with she said, that shit sucks. I'm gonna do something outstanding. And these these people are like, what? I've got money in that system. I am actually making some like I have money in this real estate company that has money in this business. Uh, that, 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 that gets rent from here. So I need your butt in the seat. It's all that kind of stuff going on too, by the way. With Power BI, I can do that. Boom, 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 boom. And no thanks. Company does not want that because they can't measure it. They can't measure the productivity and they just see Barbara as a problem, right? So, so if on the other hand, so what does Barbara do? Barbara does her automation. She automates her whole job and then looks busy. Sound familiar, right? Like how many, how many much percentage of, of the corporate world is all about looking busy? And I say, I talk a few times about, you know, getting your job done within- That's the what I should have done. <laughs> I would still be working there.
couple hours. If you're smart like Barbara, you will. You can. It is not that difficult. But but for you, manager, you have to. Ah, oh, wait, hold on. You're busy. I don't care if you're working from home. All right, a little hiccup there on my computer. Done within a couple hours. If you're smart like Barbara, you will. You can. It is not that difficult. But, but for you manager, you have to appear busy. I don't care if you're working from home, you're working in the office, whatever it is. You need to make sure that those proxies on activities that they're measuring are all filled. All like, okay, because yeah. that's all they care about. Okay? So that's... Yeah, they don't really, they don't really, they haven't been given the checklist that, that, that allows this person and these people to be involved. They have a little sliver on the room for improvement, a tiny little slice here, and a tiny little slice here where they'll be accepting something new. But you're normally not, these aren't the people, right? And these are the people who are drawn and droves those corporate environments. And they, they do all the box ticking, the people at the top of the, they're more up here, okay? They come in, the preservers come in here at the bottom, and they just move their way up by doing the box ticking and doing everything. That's just, and these people never realize that their time and their te this tech thing that they think is going to be forever, their time is very limited. Their time is very limited. They're used to being in these other environments and their the, the academia and all the people, business schools, they all talk about being in, in this industrial environment. They're going to be the managers of it. And it's not hard, right? It's not that hard it's doing the algebra in an industrial environment. So it's not, not that difficult. So it's all this other stuff like, oh, team building and leadership, blah, blah. It's like, mm, it's just trying to keep your people on the production line and in the widget, you know, because it's very, very dehumanizing. So they got all these strategies to keep, to keep that, to keep that going, but they don't have a strategy to deal with the destroyer creator type. So when they, when, when they come, they get very nervous because you're starting to change things and they're like, what do you mean? The things are, could be different, right? I've been bestowed the crown from the creator and you're taking the crown away. <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. If you don't get anything out of this video, except that's the game. You have to fill the proxies. You have to check the boxes that they are measuring to for whatever sort of productivity they think that they're they're measuring. Because and this is the this is the anti. This is what every company does once they're out, once they're out of the adventure driven mode and they go to corporate mode and just drilling, you know, taking taking full advantage of whatever technology or whatever product or whatever product you created. You know. When they turn into a silver whore, this is when the, this is when the, or down here, lead mine or lava lake direct competition. This is when the, these guys take hold of the company. Uh, and that's the time when these guys just leave and do something else. And a lot of times it's like, you're out there figuring, trying to find something new and there's no guarantees. Right. So, so it, it does get tiresome. So oftentimes these guys will come back into these businesses and do a tunnel of fake agile doom. And they'll just, just phone it in. <laughs> You're not going to get the maximum out of them. All right. I think you got the idea. You can watch the rest of that video. Um, and uh, I just want to say adventure driven development is the, is the answer to a lot of these, a lot of these issues. Uh, if you're going to be involved with in these corporate environments, it's just how, how they work. And this one, they're not going to change. Uh, and I'm Chris Dance. Give me a like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.